everyone, Mark Clayton with Restore Cars. I was asked to put together a video on how I got from the beginning to this point on our Lincoln Roadster body. Well, we started off and I ultrasounded it and it wasn't too bad on the thickness, but what was kind of bad is it had some lifting paint and it was 20 some years old. So we went ahead and stripped the car down. Uh, we went ahead and sanded it down because I knew it had K200 and PPG base coat clear coat on top. Found a few things wrong. I had to do some lead work on it and um, that's about it really is clean up some lead work and some things like that. No rust holes, no major problems, no wood rot. The thing was really in very nice condition. So um, the first thing I did after I got that all done is I masked it all off so I could shoot the wood. I wanted to put some epoxy primer and some sealer on the wood and preserve it. So that was the first step. Then after I got that done, I masked that all off, and then I got it ready to mass or ready to uh, prime the outside of the body. We roll it into the booth, and we get it all prepped up. We use prep solvent, um, which is a DX330, and uh, get all the pieces ready to go. We try to be as efficient as possible, so uh, we load up as much as we can in the booth and still be comfortable. Here's the deck lid, the gas tank, along with the body. Here's our mixing bank. As I mentioned, we are a PPG certified shop. We have a Deltron and Concept. Uh, we keep a little Omni around for some chassis parts, um, but that's about it. What I like to do is lay down one coat of DP48, which is their epoxy primer, which is what they want us to go directly to metal with. And then I put on three coats of black, and I use that as a guide coat. When I get down to white, I know it's time to quit sanding. Uh, we block that off and whatever body work we got to do we do that again and then I go on with their uh, DPS um, 3055 which is a urethane primer and I put down the light gray first I put one coat of that on and then I put three coats of the, um, the dark which is the 3057 and again I use that as a guide coat I don't want to get down and cut through that lighter primer so here it is with the uh, 3057 on it and we go ahead and bake that, uh, but we bake it a little bit differently. And um, uh, we'll go over that more in the paint section. We start off with the 220 at this phase, and we'll work our way all the way to 600 uh, with progressive steps. We put enough primer on it that that's no problem. We just keep going until we're through all the steps and we haven't broken through. If we break through, then we spot it in. Here you can see the body is all 600 sanded. You can see that one spot there that was a little high, but it blocked out. Then we get it in the paint booth and we uh, seal it with their 3027 sealer. This being a black car, we use the dark gray. Then we put on five coats of black. It's a 9700 black. It's got a lot of violet in it. And what I do is I put down two coats of pure color and then I start mixing clear. This is our bake system and um, I can set all the, the settings that I want. In this case, because we put five coats on, we've got to bake at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. So what we do is we go 59 minutes on the cure and that way uh, we don't get a solvent pop situation. If you bake this at say 180 or 190 degrees, 140 degree surface temperatures, they will uh, they will have a solvent pop problem with five coats on. These paints are really made to put down two to three coats. We need five because we're going to block two of them off. So um, we've adjusted it. We found that this combination works really well. We haven't have a computer here and it's all set up automatically and I can just go away and do other things. You can of course do this manually but I highly recommend that you use uh, baked paints. Here's the body after it's come out of the paint booth. It's shot. Um, what we do is we let that sit about five days, seven days, depends on the outside temperature and, and the, the humidity and whatnot. Let's talk a little bit about sandpaper and sanding with our dry erase board here. If you had a um, orange peel, so it's going to roll along like this, kind of like the mountains and you want to shave the top of this off continuously okay and you just keep going down here until you're down here at the bottom okay and here's your paint level all nice and flat if I take a piece of uh, a real fine paper 
and I'm going to go up and down these mountains. If I take 2,000 paper, or if I take 1,000 paper, it tends to ride up this hill and down this hill and kind of up this hill and down this hill and up this hill and down this hill. So that you end up with, you didn't get it shaved off straight. The only way that I can get this straight, really, is to come along with real coarse paper. Looks like this. Okay. And nice and even particles. Okay. And if I turn that, this is the, the paper here, and here's my, my sanding block, and here's my peaks. I'm going to come and I'm going to start shaving this off because it's not going to go down in this valley. And I'm going to keep shaving this off because I've got real coarse paper. And we use uh, 600. Especially on flat panels, always 600. If we got a real compound curve, like on a rear fender or something, we may go with uh, 800. That's an 8 to start. And that'll start shaving that down. And we go all the way with either the 600 or 800, all the way down to the bottom. So now all of this stuff is gone, but what we're left with is either 600 or 800 scratches. So if we magnify this, we went from this big thing to this. And that the closer or the more accurate the paper is, the higher quality manufacturer of the paper, the more even that pattern is going to be. We don't endorse any products. Nobody pays me any money. I don't have anything going with any company. But I'll tell you, we're, we're 3M guys. I've tried them all. Um, and it seems like that 3M has the best products to give us the most uniform uh, sanding pattern um, that we can find in the industry. So we'll start with six or eight hundred. Fine. We're all down to essentially this, a nice even pattern of very small sand scratches. And we'll go first six hundred. Then we go to 1,000, then we go to 2,000, all on our sanding block, okay? Either hard or semi-hard. Then we go to 3,000. And the 3,000 is our DA with the round squishy pad, and we stop at 3,000. I think you can go clear to 5,000, but we found with 3,000, it works real good. So that's how you get stuff leveled. The leveling all happens here at 600. And then from there on out, the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, all it is is taking these sand scratches out and making them smaller and smaller and smaller. And then here's your buff. So that's all you're doing. That's the way you level your thing. That's the way that we do it. Everybody has their methodology, but that really works for us. This is one of our sanding and polishing rooms. This is an old cross draft paint booth that we converted into a sanding and polishing room. Added some nice lights to it and it really works well. The uh, first step that we're going to do is the uh, 600 wet, like we talked about in our previous section. And we use plenty of water with some soap in it, and what we start doing is knocking it down. What we're looking for, this section right here looks pretty good. Uh, we've got it all leveled out. We got rid of this orange peel that you can see right here in this section. But down here, we still got some dark it mixed in with the light. That means we haven't leveled that orange peel out. So we'll just keep hitting this until we've gotten rid of that. You got to be real careful on your edges, like right up here. We got to level that out, but boy, we got to be careful because on an edge, you usually have about half the amount of paint that you do down in a crevice, like inside here. You have double the amount of paint due to the capillary action of liquid. And look at these paint jobs where guys sanding them out, and they didn't get down in these corners real good. And it looks pretty good until you get up to about here, and then down that corner. 
it looks bad. So you got to be real careful not to get up on your belt molding, but you got to get down in that corner and get it leveled out everywhere. That's just a lot of time. After we sand the body with 600, we'll let it set up to a week or more and just let it sit there and cure before we do any more. Then, after we let that sit and cure, we'll go ahead and start on the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and as long as our paper's not gumming up or giving us any problems, uh, we'll just keep going with it. So, uh, when we get the, the 1 and 2,000 done, then we go on with the 3,000, and this is the, D, the Dyna Braid with uh, 3,000 uh, paper. We like 3M. We like 3M on all the stuff. We just keep going with the 3000 until we've got a nice lathered up uh, surface and we make sure we get rid of all the sand scratches. Here's our cabinet that's outside one of our sanding rooms and uh, we use Adams polishes and we use 3M number one. That seems to be our magic for success around here. Here's a portable sanding and polishing uh, cart that we use. We bought it for two bucks from the school district. And uh, there's our Adams Polish. We use their polish correcting compound, and then there's another glaze that we use. They have a pretty neat system. You can jump on their website and, and check it out. We always keep some tables around uh, to put all of our tools on. We like the Roops Polisher here, and this is one of the Adams pads. They have a system that it's uh, color-coded. Uh, but this is a fantastic lightweight buffer. Um, this is a uh, just a regular angle um, pneumatic sander that we use with our um, pads for our 3M. And then here is another one that I like this one. Um, it's a Chicago pneumatic that we run with uh, Adams again. What we like to do is run 3M number one polishing compound first. We found the Adams just will not cut down to where we want to cut as quickly as we want to cut. So we use a 3M wool pad. Makita grinder there. I, I just love them. I've been using them for years. And uh, so we cut it down first with a 3M and then we switch to the Atom system and it's absolutely fantastic. It is the best stuff I've ever used. And I got no dog in this fight. Nobody pays me anything. I'm just telling you the straight up of what we use. Uh, we like a soft pad, a real hard pad, and a nice clean sponge and a clean bucket of water with a little soap in it. And that's, uh, that's what we use on the sanding part. And we use a little bit of water on our um, first go with the, the 3M uh, number one, uh, I believe they call it a machine uh, compound. It's expensive, 138 bucks a gallon. But we found that if we go over this uh, 3,000 grit sanding with this combination right here, that we'll get it cut down really fast. And then what we'll do is we'll use this small buffer here. Uh, to get down into the crevices a whole lot better. And then it's on to the uh, Adams polish um, with the Rupus. Here we are with the body uh, done with the 3M and uh, it'll have all kinds of swirl marks in it but all the sand scratches will be gone. What is so nice about this system is that once I get rid of all the sand scratches with the uh, 3M number one and that big buffer with the wool pad then we move on to the uh, to the Atom system with this Rupus uh, buffer, which is so lightweight, and, and you could run this thing all day long. It's just wonderful. So then, in the small places again, we'll use their their smaller pad and that Chicago pneumatic. So after oh a good 40, 50 hours of polishing, sanding, and polishing, we arrive here. Um, it's about two thirds of the way done. We still got some belt molding details to do. Um, but we're really close. Um, we haven't put any of the, the final Adams polishes on it yet. You can see that 9700 is really a nice uh, purpley or dark blue black. When you put that violet in there, it really makes a difference. See how we got cut down in the corners real good? You can see my hand there with the camera. I'm running an Osmo there. Uh, still got some things to clean up because we're not done polishing yet. I like to polish the door jams, the firewall, all the little things in the car because it makes it look oh so much better. I hope this was a help and uh, if you want anything else, let me know. We'll put together a video for you. Take care. Bye.